Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Sakshi Sethi and I manage the corporate membership program here at Optica, formerly OSA. You might have also been to several of our webinars under OIDA. Really excited to uh, relaunch this program again for 2022 and have several fantastic sponsored webinars lined up for this year. Today's is our first for the year. Um, so I'm excited to introduce uh, VPI Photonics, one of our corporate members to go ahead and get Get started with their presentation here in just a few moments. Now I'm going to go ahead and pass things over to Chris to get us started. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Sakshi. Thanks for the introduction. Um, I'll just start and uh, introduce who uh, you'll be hearing from today. So I'm Chris Maloney. I'm the Director of Business Development and Managing Director of U.S. Operations for VPI Photonics. And today with us, we have Shi Li, who's a Principal Application Engineer and Dmitry Komchenko, who's a product manager. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining us in this talk today titled Optical Link Design Automation from Access to Core Networks. Um, before I jump into it, I'll just, uh, I'll make one note after the event, we will have uh, a virtual happy hour or networking session. So if you wanna join us, we're using the Wonder platform. At the, end of the, at the end of the webinar, I'll actually just drop a link in the chat box. So keep a lookout for that if you wanna have a you know, one-on-one -on -one conversation with one of us afterwards. Um, so I'll, I'll start off with a, a brief introduction and background to set the stage today. And then she will join us and talk about the, our approach to, to network design. And then Dimitri will get into more details and discuss advanced network designs. So I'll, I'll first start just to touch on some of the industry trends. Um, I actually pulled some data from the FCC, the Federal uh, Communications Commission, um, to show the percentage of the U.S. population with access to optical fiber broadband over the past five years. Um, so it's, in, it's interesting to see that just five years ago, only 20% uh, of the population had access. And within that five years now, 40% of the population has access. And, and there's actually um, starting to be some competition in the space where some areas have two or more providers. Um, so over the past five years, there's been constant growth. Um, I also uh, found some, some data from a research survey done um, uh, interviewing internet service providers and to understand their anticipation of network growth over the next five years. Um, so you can you can really see uh, they're expecting continued growth at this at the same rate. Um, and specifically largest uh, the amount of traffic should be at this resi residential broadband access networks and, and metro. Um, so optical networks have been growing and should continue to grow. And, and I think this is just solidified with uh, the, the trends of remote work, 4K streaming, Internet of Things. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what's expected. And so because of that, um, we're actually involved in a number of uh, research projects. Um, I'll talk about two, both funded by the, the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research. The first one is the Kiglis Project. Um, which targets the optimization of access networks with respect to performance, reliability, and efficiency. Um, and this is all through means of artificial intelligence. So this, this project actually focuses on the application scenario of a smart city. And it, it supports the idea of having a seamless connection between fiber optic communication systems and local access wireless technologies like 5G. And the goal here is to actually conduct a field trial to explore the potential benefits of AI in handling large amounts of sensor data in the context of autonomous driving. And so we actually will contribute to this project uh, a few different ways, one from a systems perspective, um, but also from a network perspective. So in the early stages, we can actually evaluate system requirements for various technologies, and then we can use those results um, to actually design the smart city networks. So if you want to learn more about this, we actually have a paper coming up at the, the top conference next week. And later in the webinar, we'll actually be working through a 50G pod example that's uh, derived from this. 
We are also partners on the Opticon project. And so this, this project aims to boost the capacity of optical, metro, and core networks. So specifically, the Opticon's goal includes the expansion of mobile applications at 5G and beyond. Um, and, and doing this by leveraging unused optical spectrum and developing new fiber types, uh, novel transmission schemes, and advanced moder monitoring. So we, we participate in this project with our team of engineers and uh, we're developing new modeling and di design concepts to enhance uh, network capacity. So we're keeping an eye on the evolution of optical networks as new technologies are constantly changing and coming um, to fruition. So as PON evolves, uh, optical equipment costs may actually increase, um, creating the, the need uh, of cost optimizing network design, um, but also constant network uh, traffic growth has led to new technologies and, uh, and to significant change in DWDM optical networks. So all um, access metro core networks all have critical design constraints that actually need to be optimized. So, so network design tools are needed both for network operators and equipment vendors um, to optimize cost and performance in their networks. So I'll give a little bit of background about VPI Photonics if you're unfamiliar with us, um, but we've actually been providing um, internationally uh, software and services for photonic design and analysis for over 20 years. And we like to think of our software as being integrated, interoperable, and industry leading. So we actually integrate efficient simulation techniques into our software with a user interface um, for devices, components, systems, and networks. Um, it's also interoperable with many third-party uh, simulation tools and programming software. So for example, you can interact with the software through Python or MATLAB as well. Um, and we're industry leading. So we're involved in a number of these European research projects, trying to stay at the, the forefront with these collaborations. And for a brief overview of our, our software solutions, we actually offer solutions at various levels of abstraction. I'll start at the bottom with device simulation. So this would be actually simulating a waveguide or a fiber and understanding how light propagates through that or, um, or calculating the modes. Um, we also have component design software. So if you're actually designing a, a fiber optic amplifier or a photonic integrated circuits, we have tools to support that. Um, for transmission design, this really touches on the systems level. So um, simulating uh, a transceiver. So the, the transmitting optics, um, the, the fiber nonlinearities and, and how the signal is received. Um, but today we're actually going to be focusing on the, the highest level of abstraction that we cover, and that's link engineering. So I'll talk about how we have uh, um, software solutions for cost optimizing your network design uh, with VPI Link Designer and VPI Link Configurator. Um, so, so these two tools are they're used by internet service providers, network operators, equipment vendors enabling optical link design automation. Um, so that enables um, a fast and efficient way to um, come to multiple network design solutions. Um, so you can do that quickly. You don't have to do it manually. Um, it also allows you to optimize uh, placement of equipment as well as the cost and, and optimizing network performance. So. It takes a technology agnostic approach, <clears throat> enabling uh, multi-vendor interoperability, where you can manage equipment libraries um, and engineering rules. Um, it also gives you a method for handling the, the entire engineering process when you're designing a network. So, so that's a brief introduction and background to get you started. And now I'm going to hand things over to Shi Li. Yeah, thanks, Chris, for the nice introduction. And I am going to talk about now about the workflow that uh, we are using. And then I'm going to briefly talk about uh, the how we are doing this. And finally, I will show you a simple access network demo live. I will 
um, begin at uh, scratch uh, at the zero. And then finally, um, I will show you how we can uh, scale this model up to um, to manage uh, whole citywide deployment. So now let's begin. So the workflow from our point of view is uh, fairly straightforward and easy to manage. So firstly, we divide it into two segments. So the first segment is that you create a component library with all your equipment and um, uh, tools that you need. And then you define a system requirements, you define uh, span into new rules that you are later then use to optimize and design the network itself. So these, this segment we call the initial setup. This can be vendor specific or can be uh, uh, using several vendors and their equipment itself. Next is then to use one of those defined system requirements to um, set them as a engineering rule for a particular network design that you want to uh, optimize, which you then you can then do. So you can design according to those set span engineering rules um, a network and then optimize it. And then finally generate reports and to um, verify and to validate then the whole network itself. And this is what we call then the day-to-day -day workflow. So I'm going to show you later on the day-to-day -day workflow. So before that, then I'm just briefly talk about the initial setup. So as I said, the initial setup involves, includes the input and all the load of equipment library. So you can either have it already uh, from, for example, from a vendor, which also uses um, our tool that has already set up their equipment into the library. So it just needs to load them, or you can just input them um, via the data sheet that you got. So here is an example of what you can do for the attenuator. So you can see that um, using the data sheet, you can then set different uh, parameters into this so that you can then later on use um, this equipment uh, for the network design. Next one is then to set system requirements, span engineering rules. So here you can see um, an example that we already have as a demo. So here, for example, is a 32 channel, 10 gigabits of a denser VDN system with several um, engineering rules that we have set. For example, BER, frequency slot, and channels, and so on. So that is already set, and you can define them um, according to your requir uh, requirements. Now, how does it work from our perspective? So um, we look at the signal as a parameterized signal representation. So that means that the signal itself are time averaged characterization. So what it means is that the signal are not defined by a whole spectrum or by its bandwidth, but by the reference frequency, the average power and certain pulse statistics. And then we define transfer functions for each of the equipment. So for example, here um, we have an Airbnb doped fiber amplifier, which is defined by several transfer functions. So the pulse propagation or the signal propagation through a trans uh, transmission link would follow such like uh, this procedure. So we have the input signal metrics, so set wavelength, average power, and so on and so forth, which propagates through the equipment which then changes according to their trans, uh, transfer function, um, the signal statistics and the signal parameters, which then propagates to the next equipment and so on and so forth. So the sequential way um, of propagating the signals through a transmission link itself. Now, let's uh, briefly discuss um, the access network that I'm going to show and I'm going to build uh, with the link configurator. So for this, I um, I've chosen the briefly uh, the recently published ITUT 50 g recommendation. So this was uh, uh, published uh, in September last year. And in this recommendation, they defined um, a system setup. So this was uh, where you see the optical line terminal here, which included uh, the legacy point transceiver and the newly recommended 50 g transceiver with um, WDM a drop multiplexer and which goes into a feeder link to a passive splitter, for example, with a ratio of one to eight, and either goes to 
than the legacy on ONU, so the user side of the pond system, or to the newly 50G pond. And as per recommendation defined, there were um, the downstream and upstream for the certain wavelengths and also for the bit rates of the transceivers. So for downstream, we have obviously the 50G, and for upstream, um, it can be chosen to between 12.5 and 25, and 50G is still for um, still waiting for um, final um, final recommendations. Um, for the whole network itself, it was defined with several classes, so class and two classes for the link loss itself. So class N1 has a link budget or loss budget from between 14 and 29 and class C between 17 and 32 dB for um, a link length of 20 kilometers and for further studies of 40 kilometers. Apart from that, there were several other um, reference uh, recommendation points, parameters, for example, average power, sensitivity for the um, required DR, dispersion range, and fiber specification. So I have now um, took those recommendations and their the parameters and um, created already um, the span engineering rule. And now I'm going to show you this in our link configurator. So let me switch to um, the software itself. So here you can see our um, link configurator GUI. And as I said, I'm gonna start from scratch. So basically I first um, created the library, then I already designed the span engine rule. And now, at, right now I just need to add um, the, or load the span engine rule design. So which I've done. So just by adding it, I um, add the rules for my network itself. I can then also um, remove or add uh, items to the standard view rule itself. So for example, I do not require rodents. So that's why I uncheck it and then use all the other um, equipment that I have loaded with my spanning view rule itself. So once I click OK, I can go to the topology. So I can now actually design my network itself. So let's do that. So here I can then define, for example, with naming my OLT and set the application type here down below to OLT itself. And you will see that once I click OK, then the icon will also change. The next part is I will set up, as the system um, definition mentioned, a WDM splitter. So I will call it WDM split. And again, here in the application type, I will then set it to a WGM split. I can also, of course, add some nodes to it, which then I will call um, because I think this is, I want to have a dedicated channel. So WDM on you. And also here, then define the application type to WDM one. This I will do as the same. And then I will show you that I have created a macro to define then my further network. So this is what I can manually design, but I can also do it with macros, which I have here uploaded. I have created a macro that will then complete my simple setup. So just by clicking on it, you can see that now, not only have, do I have now a WDM splitter, but also I have a passive splitter that is connected to two different ONUs here. And you can already see that I, with the macro I've created, I have not just created the physical link here, but also the logical channel itself. And when you can see here, if you click on this collapse, you can then see that I have created unidirectional links from OLT to uh, ONUs with the start node and end node here. And then also the uh, corresponding bit rates that comes with um, those connections. So for the downstream, 50G, and for the upstream, for example, here, the 25G. Now, what I also can do is I can not only just look at this topology, but I can also look at the um, level view. 
and so forth. So so-called level view gives you an overview about the branches that you can see. And in this particular view here, it's a photonic view. You can see then the actual components. So because we don't have any components designed or defined right now, um, let's, let's do that. So let's um, place first fibers. So here you can place either the fiber individually, or you can group them and say, I want just one type of fiber, which is, for example, this type, and then define the length. So for example, the first length from OLT to WPM split is just two kilometers, and the last two part is five kilometers long. And one of the other lengths, for example, this one, goes a bit longer, 50. So now once I've set the fibers, you can see that now um, the fibers are actually now popping up in this open. Now, node equipment are missing right now, so I'm not doing this. Uh, so I also um, configure the node equipment. And the initial uh, design of this software was um, for purely WDM transmissions and WDM networks. So, um, that, so that's why certain steps for the PON and for access network uh, is not required. So I'm just going quickly go through them. So in this particular way, you can see that we don't need some ad hoc multiplexing and configuration. So I can just quickly step over them. And then automatically a wave trans channel is um, calculated and established. Uh, and so basically here, um, I can have several wavelength solutions, but um, because I just um, designed it in just with one um, possible solution, only one solution is um, popping up here. So after I click on next, um, the last window will pop up where it shows me whether my topology and my configuration have all the required uh, equipment loaded. And because there are no indications that um, certain steps needed to, need to repeat, needed to be repeated. Um, all the specific settings are correctly set. So you can go through them and see that for a specific channel and specific link, you get the appropriate um, transponder and transceiver set. So once I click on next, this means that the configuration is complete and my system setup or my network setup is done with all the required equipment that I need in order to then um, successfully deploy this kind of simple setup. So again, if I go to the topology or the graph view, then you can still see nothing has changed here, but in the level view, you can then see the actual equipment. Now let's uh, go to um, to see how the system is performing with my uh, load up with my setup. This you can go to by clicking on the interactive sim menu, and by having interactive menu, then you can see that um, the setup is um, set for the level view. But you can also click on the individual routes and links. So, for example this route 00, zero with the link length of 20 kilometers for channel one, which goes from OLT to ONU, one of the ONUs. And it passes through the WDM split and then the passive split as well. So the first graph that you can see is the signal power and its uh, margins. So here you can see there are markings at the end, which tells me whether this power level is inside of my defined, predefined margins. So it happens once in a while that it cannot be, um, this um, solution um, cannot be found. So what you can do is you can go to the design assistant and inside this design assistant, you can manually see, you can directly see whether there will be some limit violations. So for example, my the margin or the power level is outside the predefined margin that I have set in the span. Then this would pop up, equipment violation would pop up, and you can see it either here as a number where it will be found or directly on this graph itself. So as you can see um, in the design assistant, everything seems okay and seems in order. So the next part is that I can set up, for example, um, I want to see the dispersion for all my channels. So for example, in this one, I can see 
that um, my dispersion is within certain ranges of limit that I've set. The same can be done with wavelengths, for example. So you can see um, that there are several wavelengths that are going um, through my whole system. You can either, um, as I said, so because we are in a pond, we are defining down and upstream. So you can either looking at the forward direction, so at the downstream part, or you can just by clicking and change the part and looking at the upstream. And as you can see, um, that the upstream has a little bit of, of a booster here, so its uh, power level increases suddenly. And this is because that um, when you go back to the topology in the graph view, is that we have set the lengths of the links between those two when used to the splitter and then to all T has the same length. So basically the signal power is combining inside the splitter. And this is basically what you can see and see in the interactive menu of this channel. Okay, so then um, let's uh, move back to the presentation. That is a simple uh, demo that I wanted to show you. And um, the next part is um, I, I want to talk about is the scalability. So the scalability, I want to talk briefly about the speakers project that we are involved in. So inside the speakers project, it's about the smart networks, the smart cities. And as you can see, in one of our recent publications, we have designed for Crossroad um, a smart network with a PON as backhole system. And as you can see, we have uh, several FTTX um, environments, connections, we have a WD overlay, we have um, connections to lamp posts and connections to industry that will all be covered with um, the next generation PONS network. And you, have, you can see that we have several OLTs here connected and then finally going into the cloud or into the metro area. So here you can see this um, is quite complicated and um, this is just for a single crossroad. Now, this we can easily also do in this our software. So I'm switching now back to our software and I have already pre-built a demo for that. So I just open it. And what you can see is again, it's for 50G on setup with the same um, uh, span engineering rule. And, but the topology is now more than uh, quite complex and quite um, quite a lot of uh, connections here. So here again, we can we have several, just like what you showed you in the figure of uh, the Keyless Crossroad project um, or Crossroad overview. We have several OLTs, we have WDM splitter, we have TDM, WDM pond splitter, which are connected to several buildings. We have an overlay of, of, uh, of some sort, and we have a lot of other um, when you, um, components here, and this is just for one crossroad, but we can easily um, adapt this view or um, improve or add more components and nodes uh, into this schematic so that it can be done for the whole system. Uh, sorry, for the whole system. Okay, so that is from my side, and now I leave it then. The yeah, the, yeah. Thank you, Shi. Thanks for uh, giving us uh, the, the the overview, the approach to our network design, um, and the discuss discussion of the workflow, as well as that access network example. Um, so now, now we're going to turn things over to Dimitri. So here's uh, Dimitri Komchenko, who will discuss advanced network designs, and specifically around automation techniques, and discuss link loss compensation and transceiver allocation. So now we are moving from access network to core uh, and the metro networks. And we will look at uh, different design automation tools. Uh, uh, some of them are built in and some of them are custom, in particular for link loss compensation and um, transceiver location. And most of them are written with the help of uh, application programming interface of PPI link configurator. So um, first, uh, VPI Link Configurator provides uh, a set of um, built-in design automation tools, which uh, simplify 
and accelerate uh, the design process and allows you to build a cost-optimized solution with a feasible uh, equipment configuration. And uh, of course, uh, once you have built the configuration, you may create the various types of uh, reports, again, with the built-in uh, tools. Or you, when you're designing the uh, network, so you saw right now uh, she built build topology manually, but you can do this uh, automatically. You can import topology from file with some predefined attributes of, of uh, for instance, uh, facilities or links between these facilities. And of course, you may have your own design rules, uh, so you may need uh, your own uh, design automation tools or scripts so you can write them using our API and you may write you may use any language uh, which supports com API so for instance you can write the script either in basic or Python or C sharp for instance and eventually you may come up with the solution with a single synthesis script which covers all uh, steps of the design process, which and generates a solution from scratch. That's, that's also possible using the API. Speaking of uh, link loss compensation, uh, oops, if you are looking at the um, quite uh, simple uh, metro network, uh, uh, in particular, Van Hall network, when uh, baseband unit talks to several uh, remote radio heads, so if you are looking at a particular uh, transmission line between two points, the manual design for point-to-point -point link is uh, quite simple and quite obvious, and you can build the, the uh, uh, optimal solution manually. But if you have uh, multiple light passes in a network, especially in a core network, when uh, several light passes share one link and then they are split it into different branches and the, in the reverse direction they are merged into one uh, WDM signal and in uh, metro or core network you have distances which are uh, uh, longer than in, in access network so uh, received optical power may go below receiver threshold so we need some kind of amplifier and the manual design for, for more complicated uh, system is uh, more, 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 let's say, challenging task. So, it, it, and it takes definitely more time. So can it be somehow automated and accelerated? Uh, yes. And we uh, uh, developed the algorithm, which we presented at the, network, the Optical Network Design and Modeling Conference a couple of years ago. And the algorithm uh, uh, configures, uh, let's say, uh, amplifiers and tinnitus pads in a network. At first, of course, it is, uh, uh, reads the um, initial configuration of the network topology, including add drop equipment and light passes. Uh, then it, uh, let's say, uh, defines or detects uh, sub-networks which can be simulated simul uh, separately in order to accelerate the, the process and uh, in order to propagate signal and to estimate the power budget budget for instance it's uh, sourced topologically all fiber spans uh, in the sub-network and when the amplifiers and attenuated pads and maybe DCMs if they are required are added to the uh, sub-network, uh, the feasibility of the equipment is checked with respect to equipment limits and design constraints. And eventually you get uh, one or several solutions if they are possible for, for, for the current network configuration and current list of available equipment, uh, which are optimized with respect to cost of added equipment and performance. Uh, if I have time, I will show you the live demo of this of this link loss compensation algorithm in the end of my presentation. Uh, but uh, of course, you can watch the video about the presentation of this algorithm at the conference uh, on our website. 
And the one thing should be mentioned here is actually uh, when you design the optical network at first, uh, at the step when you are establishing uh, network topology, you may uh, select different uh, uh, light pass configurations. So link loss compensation algorithm uh, works on the predefined physical and logical topology when light passes are established and a drop equipment is configured and all fiber, fiber spans are defined. But uh, uh, any uh, given traffic request can be realized using different light pass configurations. For example, with different uh, transceiver types. Uh, and uh, this uh, brings us to another question how to uh, configure optical channels in a network or light passes um, in, and optimize the, the system performance from this point of view. And uh, uh, as a, one of the partners in Opticon project, we have developed the um, algorithm which, uh, let's say, uh, handles this pro pro problem. The Opticon the project itself uh, deals with uh, multiband transmission systems and uh, advanced modulation format and uh, uh, optimization of network planning. And of course, the question is uh, actually, is, as always, the, the, the efficient solution with respect to, to cost and performance. And if you are talking about core networks uh, with a flex grid and bandwidth variable transceivers, uh, the day-to-day -day workflow, uh, which is supported by Link Configurator, may have one optional step between uh, topology definition and a drop node. A drop equipment configuration is a, a optical channel configuration. Uh, in a let's say in, in a default uh, uh, workflow, you specify uh, optical channel configuration uh, as an input. For instance, if you are given with one terabit request between two nodes, you may say that I would like to use 10, 100 gig uh, uh, optical channels. But then there is a question about uh, optimal spectrum utilization. Um, for example, if in another part of a network you have uh, 400 gig requests, can you use 400 gig transceivers for this particular route? Will it meet the uh, uh, receiver, uh, receiver sensitivity? Or you should use uh, another configuration, maybe four 100 gig transceivers here for 400 gig light passes. Well, as usual, uh, the, the optimal solution somewhere in between. So there can be, uh, it can be, for instance, um, two or light passes with uh, two or 300 gig uh, transceiver configurations. So how does this uh, algorithm work? Uh, we can look at the um, 17 node subnetwork at, of German topology. And suppose we need to establish uh, 200 gig connection be between Berlin and another city. And the route goes through several spans of different lengths. So at first step, the algorithm estimates OSNI degradation due to amplifier noise and we assume exact span loss compensation in the amplifiers are allocated at each uh, repeater hard or not within the road with the gain equal to the loss of the preceding span. Uh, as span lengths are different, so OSNI degradation in, in forward and backward direction from A to Z and from Z to e, uh, A nodes um, differ. So the algorithm um, 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 considers the worst case. And of course, in the core networks, you have uh, many optical channels. So at some link between start and end node, you may have a, a WDM signal and a cross-channel interference in order to allocate uh, to, to, to configure optical channels uh, properly, to, to get a feasible configuration, you need to compare uh, receiver threshold with uh, generalized OSNR, which includes as uh, amplifier noise, so nonlinear noise caused by cross-channel interference. 
Eventually, the algorithm builds uh, optical channel configuration, which uh, 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 targets two things. Uh, uh, it uh, they can, uh, the the um, uh, configured light bias means the receiver uh, thresholds, and the bandwidth of all light passes allocated to the to the given traffic request uh, is minimized. Now let's have a look at this uh, in, in a link configurator. So I switch to link configurator. As I said, this is the optional step between topology definition and a drop node, a drop equivalent configuration. So I would like to go to this step for, from scratch. I create a new design, that's pen engineering rule. And then I would like to create topology. I do not want to create such a uh, big network in comparison to, to access network uh, manually, so I will import topology data from file. At first, I import nodes and links. And along with the uh, object uh, themselves, uh, I have also imported uh, uh, attributes. For instance, for nodes, uh, these are uh, position, co coordinates, let's say. And for links is the distance between nodes. Uh, so using nodes, for instance, we can, uh, let's say, beautify the uh, network layout. Again, we can use uh, another uh, macro. Now, nodes are positions with respect to their coordinates. And we can establish fiber plan, as you have already seen in previous demonstration. But in this case, I do not uh, enter manually fiber lens because it uh, was uh, uh, imported uh, with the topology data. I just select the fiber type. As you can see, distances between uh, nodes are quite big, quite long. So we need repeater hearts to allocate uh, amplifiers, inline amplifiers. And this can also be done by uh, another design automation tool, which is controlled by a uh, span engineering rule parameter, max span len, which you can edit in a requirements view. Let's go back to topology view and just to see how how this uh, how these uh, repeater hearts can be inserted, so I right click on a long link and, sele and select insert repeater heart uh, macro, which says that we need uh, repeater hearts for hitting links in a system. Okay, so the topology is updated and. As we added more spans, we need to populate them with fibers. So we update fiber plan now. When it's done, we can also import traffic demands. Of course, we can create them manually, but uh, it will take time. So I would like to show you how it can be done automatically. So we also import traffic demands from file. After important, uh, we see that the uh, route is not defined uh, for a given traffic request because between start and end node, we have uh, multiple uh, possible routes in a system. So we need to assign routes. And we can do this also manually or automatically. Just let's run another micro, which is written now not in basic, but in C sharp. And it's calculate the shortest path for each traffic request. OK, it's done. And now we can look at for instance, at our traffic request from Berlin to another city, which is Nuremberg. 
and this uh, routed traffic demand goes through Leipzig and one, two, three, four, five, six, five spans. And in total, it's uh, something about 450 kilometer long. And we can look at this traffic demand, ro routed traffic demand in our channel assignment to see how how big the capacity requested is. So the requested capacity is about 200 gig. And the question is, uh, which transceiver should be used or can be used here? Say I can use one uh, 200 gig transceiver. Uh, in this case, will the uh, receiver receiver meet the receiver limit or shall I use, for instance, two 100 gig transceivers? So let's configure optical channels for all uh, traffic demands. And we can do this also by another uh, two which is written in basic now uh, for simplicity and for 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 let's say uh, to speed up the demonstration uh, gsmr calculation is uh, switched off in this uh, demonstration and the optical channels are configured only with respect to osnr that is only amplifier noise is accounted if we look at gsnr if we uh, account for Nonlinear noise at this step, so this uh, configuration step may take up to one minute for this particular one minute for this particular network. Now we have configured uh, light passes, and we have defined uh, signal rates and transceivers and appropriate bitrate and modulation formal is selected. The next step, of course, is uh, configuring a drop equipment in this design. Uh, okay. Now, I guess I have no time to demonstrate lean cost compensation. Uh, unfortunately, we have only 10 minutes for Q&A session. But as I said, you can watch the video on our website. Now let's wrap up the discussion. So we have demonstrated uh, different uh, design automation tools. Some of them are built-in, some of them are custom and written in different uh, uh, languages. And they cover um, different um, design, uh, design workflow steps. But using the API, you can create uh, your own synthesis script, which will uh, create the complete configuration of your network uh, within, let's say, uh, one click. And it can be done using API of uh, VPI link configurator. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, th thank you, Dimitri, um, for that overview there. Um, also, feel free to reach out with questions. You can see the, uh, I guess, uh, if you reach out to sales at bpiphotonics.com, um, we'll be happy to address the questions to the right people. We also offer, we can have uh, individual product demonstrations, or um, if you're looking to uh, demo the software, we can we can talk about that as well. So again, I just uh, thank everybody for your attention today and uh, appreciate the time. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, Dimitri and she for fantastic presentations. Thank you for sponsoring. Thank you for the great content. I will see everyone at the next webinar. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks. See you. Thank you. See you. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye.